Hey folks, and welcome to the Pipnotic Symposium for the 15th of November 2019. Today we are going to touch on a little bit of supply and demand theory. We're going to run through some pairs, and then we are going to talk about the theory based on what we're seeing on the charts. Okay. Okay, so the theory is something we touched upon earlier this week, which was how to incorporate sentiment and economic data releases within your trading when you're trading the supply and demand model. And, uh, and of course, we also touched upon kind of like the longer term influences on the market, which are inflation, deflation, interest rates, and, and things like this. And, uh, and these are kind of the, the slower elements of the market that cause the market to either move higher or lower. When interest rates go up for a currency, uh, flows will generally gradually begin to flow into high yielding currencies. When interest rates go down, as we're seeing pretty much across the board these days, um, well then flows are, are gradually going to start moving out of, of these currencies and to, to maybe seek something that's yielding a higher returns. And we're seeing this across the board where interest rates are being cut uh, pretty much everywhere. Um, this is happening quickly in some countries and it's quite slow in, in some other countries as well. And so you'll notice this as well, uh, and this is obviously affecting where money is flowing. Uh, there's no point in holding euros when the yields for, for the euro uh, are going down. And so this is going to affect the uh, uh, where people keep their money. Okay, and then we have the, the shorter term influences on the market, which are economic data releases. Um, and these you experience on a daily basis. So you have these these data reports that are released every day, jobless claims, um, unemployment, uh, PPI, and things like this. And these obviously have an impact on the market based on the number in contrast to the expected number. Okay. And so if you have a high expectation of something which is good for a currency, but the number that is released that is low, well, then this is going to potentially be negative because the expected value is high. We didn't get those high numbers. And so this is going to uh, potentially have a negative impact on the currency. Okay, so normally these shorter term data uh, data points are, are priced into the price of the asset. Um, if the expectations do not meet the actual data, well, then this is when you're going to see some discrepancies and quick moves uh, in, in, in the marketplace. Okay, so if we look at this right now. This is the Euro US dollar uh, bleeding edge price on the four hour chart. If we have a look on, on the monthly chart, you can see that we are we are drifting low. We've actually been drifting lower ever since 2000. When is this? 2008. So we had the big financial crash price dumped uh, for three months straight. It just dumps. We had a, a retracement. <clears throat> okay, price went higher. We approached the uh, the lower edge of this area of supply, and then price dumped. And we did this many times. We did this. Uh, we had one dump, two dumps, three dumps, four dumps, and now we are kind of sitting on the fifth uh, dump currently. And price is uh, approaching these all-time lows. If we have a oh, not all-time lows, these these lows, multi-year lows, um, which brings us back to about 2002, where we have this new area of demand. Okay, and price had a a test here at the edge of the buy zone, which was just here. You can see the wick here. Uh, and we had a bit of a bounce and then pi price moved from this buy zone to the opposing side of the market, which is this area of supply. And this is where price attracted some selling pressure. And now price is just drifting lower. Okay, so if you look at this, I mean, what, what do we see when we look at this price chart here? Well, you can see that we have negative interest rates. So the flows between the euro and the American dollar are moving out of euro and into American dollar. And you can see this because if you focus on the right side of the chart, you can see that, I mean, we're seeing price move lower. Okay. And if you look at this whole price structure, I'm going to draw this from the low here to the high here to where price currently is. Well, notice that prices went higher and then it went lower. Okay. So this whole move here, is standing on this leg here, the origin of which is down here. So this is the origin of this move up to this high here. And now we're having a bit of a push lower. And notice that we are in the lower edge, the lower end of this price movement. So we have about 50% here. So this is this is the high, this is kind of the higher edge of it. 
from here to here and from here to here and from here down to here we have the low edge of it here okay so we are in um in the lower half of this price uh, structure just here okay and so technically speaking when you when you see uh, things like this when price is kind of getting close towards the origin of the move then we tend to get like we look for for buying opportunities because price is low when price is low we buy when price is high we sell and when price is up around a clear area of supply as we saw just here and starts to move away well then this gives us um, a negative bias okay so we, we want to be kind of buying this is generally speaking buying in the lower half and selling in the upper half and the opposite for price structure that goes down and then up like that so we have the origin of move which is high we have the move the all-time or the the low of it then we have a retracement a return back to the origin okay but this is kind of the bullish uh, move here where we have a push higher and we have a sell-off and our price is kind of sitting here but you can see that price is sitting around here so we do have a buy um, a bias but <clears throat> this is very important we also have a buy zone that is lower than current price okay so the buy zone actually I'm going to use these tools here the buy zone was here price poked into it we went higher we reacted a, a monthly supply we moved down we formed another area of supply and now we're moving lower what does that tell us well, that tells us that we do not want to buy until price moves at least below this and this brings our attention to this price structure structure just here okay so this is an interesting area because historically it represented value okay so this is a this is an old area of value back in 2002 price rallied we accumulated orders to move price higher we marked the edge of the buy zone and then price kept going north okay and then we reacted at this and now price is currently here so what do we do well when you look at this even though we're in the lower half of this price move because price has already been back down to here we have a, 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 a bias to sell okay so my bias for the euro US dollar for the time being is to short um, this particular asset and I'm doing this for, for several reasons several reasons number one we have the uh, the interest rate differential between these two currencies is negative and so you'll be paying every day to hold positions long so if you're trading a longer term well then you want to consider this especially if the volume of your trades is substantial because you'll be paying interest every day okay so you have to keep that in mind it can be quite expensive to hold these positions for extended periods of time okay so we have a negative bias on the euro american dollar you can also see here that we have uh, i mean prices moving lower and we have the uh, we have the most recent area of supply demand that was tested was this monthly supply just up here and this is where price is uh, moving down um, i used to um, do education for uh, for an organization uh, a few years ago and we discussed this area um, a long time ago like years ago and, uh, and we assess this as being a, an interesting area at which we could uh, consider to sell okay and if we go down to the weekly chart we're going to be looking for for similar things here okay for, for here we have that price structure so we have the origin of the move it starts here it goes up to here and this is where price currently is notice here that we have I mean half of it halfway through is here so we have the sell zone from the high and the buy is down here so we are in buy territory but notice that we have the beginning of the buy zone is here okay and why is it there well it's there because well, first of all this is the origin of this move and then when we when you have an origin of a move you want to look for areas where where price leaves an area the origin it left this origin here so it left here it moves up and then price comes back down it seeks liquidity to do what to drive price higher and it'll do this a number of times okay and so when price turns around so we reach the top which is here it normally come down and it'll reference these buy zones here this is the first buy zone once it's tested you don't want to you don't want to look to buy here because price has already been back to this area this price level here 
Okay, so this one is gone, this one is not allowed. It's going to go to the next one, which is this one. Once price tests this area, you can no longer buy here and you can no longer buy here. So you look down, the next one is here. Once it bounces, which it likely does, you can't buy here, can't buy here. So you keep you keep on doing this. And notice that I mean price is already down here. Okay. And price is referencing this this buy zone here, which was uh, maybe this one just here because we're getting ah, maybe this one here because we're getting pretty close to the origin. But notice that we have this down here. So do we want to be buying here? No, we do not want to be buying there. Why? Because price has already been back here. It was back here here and it was back here here. So this area of demand or this buy zone has already been rebalanced as you're seeing here. So price will likely continue lower um, until it finds the next one which is here and then the next one which is here and ultimately the origin of the move which is here okay so this is what we're seeing currently on on the euro usd okay we are obviously going to react a shorter term to these areas of of demand then i shouldn't have removed that little graphic but i mean when price reaches let me just draw it again when price reaches these areas here and here we're normally going to have a bit of a bounce and then within this price structure it's going to look like this It'll move up down up down up okay so this is the same as this okay just on a on a on a fractal level and so within this little retracement this departure from this area of demand or value you are going to see intraday trading opportunities and that's what we're seeing down here currently okay price is also going to react to this one here where price came down we left and now we're moving down to this area just here and this is what we're seeing just here we have weekly demand okay so price came here and this is demand because price moved above this high which you can see just here and so that validates uh, this area here as demand but likely on a smaller time frame this is this is valid on this time frame because we actually uh, managed to accomplish something but we have something here um, that we can expect price to bounce on because price managed to move above this high here so this is considerable demand here but longer term it's not this is just a shorter term um, uh, area which we can uh, we can potentially attract some intraday volatility okay so we have that there we'll just mark off that area I'll just mark it off like so with this tool good and now I'm going to go down to the daily chart we're going to have a look and see what that looks like well that looks like this okay so we had this area here which is this is the edge of this weekly area that we saw here it's not a great area but it did manage to move above this and it did manage to move through this so we had supply price left it tested this supply it came down we form this uh, this accumulation candle and then price moved through this and this child parent okay now we move through the upper edge of the parent and we closed above it so that qualifies this little air let me zoom in a bit so it's clearer uh, this little area here has demand for that reason and i'll do that again we had this so we have this here it was tested this tells us that we have um, interest in selling price left we formed the base at weekly demand we rallied accumulated rallied and then we pushed high we closed above the high here went down we had another attempt and now we're moving lower okay so this area is interesting to us because it managed to consume this if it had not managed to consume anything then it is of no interest to us and so looking at this we can say okay well we go to the daily chart look for clarity we are allowed to buy these are shorter term trades but you want to buy at an area that is uh, attractive if you look at this this is a I mean the risk reward for this trade here is not good enough because you have the risk which will be maybe one or two times or one and a half times the size of this area of demand and if you look how far price went it didn't really go that far so if price would have moved up here for example well, that would have been a little bit better but that's not the case here and also notice that price is moving lower so I mean we have flows moving down 
probably because of this, the interest rate differential. But we do have intraday opportunities uh, despite that fact. OK, so if we go to the daily chart, you want to look for these things again. So here we have, we have this here. OK, this was tested. Price moved through it. We pulled the slingshot back to the edge, and then we went higher. So the beginning of the buy zone for this little price structure, just like we saw on the bigger time frames, is the low of the lowest <clears throat> test the departure okay so here this is where price cake to and this is where we are looking to bounce also notice that we have price came down and we had a bounce on something and then we move higher we can't see what that is so we need to go on the four hour chart to spot that and here you can see it so we had four hour demand here it was tested and now it's gone. Okay, what area is responsible for doing that? Well, is this one? Well, this one is this is a nice area, but this one did not result in this area being removed. Price went up, so we did not manage to move through. We went above, we formed this area, price came down, and then we came up to the high, and then we left. So that tells us that the beginning of the sell zone is the high of the highest area here which is here so this is probably where we're going to see uh, prices to begin to move lower from okay we'll probably have a bounce here as well but technically this is where the beginning of the sell zone is and if you look above price we have this one here as well okay there it is done okay so the 11125 area this is a nice area and at the one 10 at the 111 area we have uh, another area uh, that we could attract some some sellers but notice that we have supply here the beginning of the sell zone is here there's a big gap between these two okay so within here we have kind of liquidity void which tells us there's thin liquidity in here the thick liquidity is above and then we have additional pools of liquidity which are located at this area here so if price manages to move up to this area it'll probably have a bounce if it manages to move into this leg here we'll probably have a bounce at micro areas which we have on much smaller time frames Let's see if we can find one there we have this one here which is Pitnolic software found for us so if we go to the floor and have a look we have this here okay so price bounced here went down and we have this little area here but the upper edge of this area is roughly but this is located just here okay so we had this one here so price will likely have a, a bit of a bounce here so we're probably going to see some bounces at the 111 area and about the 111 12 area and then ultimately the 111.25 which is a which is a nice area just here so we have a few areas here that we can consider okay and also notice that we had we had this area that was formed price went up we came down we referenced this area of demand we move to the low the slingshot so this one this means that this is not going to hold price moves up we move through it we move down we come down we form we move into this little this little pattern here have a tiny bounce and price moves lower and it moves to this you see the wick on this candle here this is telling us where the beginning or the slingshot was pulled back on a micro level does it mean it does it mean we should trade this no price goes to the other slingshot which is here we're having a bounce where's the next one or well, the next one if you're buying is here and we have another one here and then we have another one here. I like this one because this is lower. And it's also, it represents, um, what's going on there with the software? Black space below price just here. Okay, so we have that just here, which I think is pretty interesting. And this is at the one, what is that? The one 
dot zero nine. I can't even see that. Let me move this out of the way. Let's delete it. The one zero ninety five nine oh five. Okay. So this is an interesting area. So there are all these areas marked off here. And so these little wicks that come down and move away, they're simply pointing to the beginning of the buy and the sell zones. Here we have a buy zone. Here we had a buy zone. We had a bounce. Here we had a here we had a buy zone. We had a bounce. Here we had a sell zone. Price went through it. We bounced. Here we had a buy zone. Price bounced. We formed this. Price went down. Price pulled back. We have a sell zone. Price tested it. We had this area here. Price has not been back. This one here. Price has not been back. This one here and this one here. Price tested it. We're moving through it. So where's price probably going to go to? Intraday, shorter term, it's probably going to come here and have a bounce and then move away from there before it continues moving up towards this and ultimately this here. Okay, so uh, really interesting stuff to pay attention to. And so this is the major flows. You go to the big time frames and you and you and you look for the for the major flows. Where is price moving on the longer time frame? Because this is going to give you your longer term directional bias. And then you identify the beginning of your buy and your sell zones, as we did. You mark those off. And you wait for price to come to those. When price comes to those, you wait for price to form the beginning of the buy and sell zones on the smaller time frames. And these are essentially your entries. Waiting for those on the bigger time frames is going to enable you to hold your trades for much longer because these are happening on the on the monthly, weekly, daily, uh, the bigger time frames. But it doesn't mean that you can't trade them on the, on the small time frames. You can also look for the exact same patterns on the smaller time frames. I would not go to the one minute or the five minute and do this because I think that you'll probably find yourself getting into a bit of trouble. And this is because on the one minute and the five minute, you're, sim you're essentially watching how price moves up and down um, in an attempt to seek liquidity. And so you're not really seeing supply and demand on the one minute or the five minute. You are seeing price react to it. Okay, so one hour areas of supply and demand, I mean then, sorry, one minute areas of supply and demand are not areas of supply and demand you wanna be, uh, you wanna be uh, trading. You wanna be focused on the bigger ones because this is essentially where uh, the meat of the volume is gonna be located. Okay, so intraday volatility is going to be happening here. Um, but when you're looking at the bigger time frames, you're also looking at priced in interest rate uh, differentials, uh, inflation data, and things like this. But you want to be making your trading decisions based on the right side of the chart because this is going to ensure that you're paying attention to what's going on on an intraday level. Okay, good. Well, I'm going to leave it at that. I hope this uh, video was useful and interesting, um, and have a lovely weekend. Thanks for your attention.